building during an earthquake, the way the building is constructed and your position in the building can have an effect on the shaking you feel. This means you may experience an earthquake differently from someone only a few buildings away. The type of construction also has a big effect on whether a building is damaged in an earthquake. To understand how much it may shake inside a building, we first need to explore some basics of building design. Many types of materials are used in building construction, and the type of material and how it's used affects how a building performs during an earthquake. These materials have a wide range of physical properties. For example, brick masonry is very stiff, but can fracture under earthquake forces, whereas wood can't support as much weight, but is more flexible. Depending on how much steel reinforcement is used, reinforced concrete can be made to be either very stiff or somewhat flexible. Architects and structural engineers can design buildings to resist deformation during an earthquake. If the building is stiff and strong and only a few floors tall, the shaking you feel might not be very different from someone standing outside. At the opposite end of the spectrum, a tall building that is designed to absorb the energy of an earthquake by flexing like a tree may have a significant amount of movement, particularly in the upper stories. For example, in the 2019 magnitude 7.1 Ridgecrest earthquake, some people in high-rises in L.A. experienced motion sickness. A wood frame home will flex and creak, so you may feel the earthquake more than if you were outside. But if the home is tied to its foundation and has shear wall support, it's one of the safest buildings to be in during an earthquake. However, not all buildings, especially older buildings, are properly designed to minimize earthquake damage, so there are additional construction issues that can affect the shaking you feel. When the ground shifts violently in an earthquake, weak materials can fail, shear forces can bend or break unbraced walls and bridges, untethered houses can slide off their foundations, and heavy roofs can collapse. Earthquakes release seismic wave energy that enters all structures, and depending on the quality of the materials, it can cause the construction materials to break, crack, or even fail completely. Wood and steel structures can generally withstand shaking, but brick, stone, or adobe are more prone to failure. A devastating example of that happened during the tragic 2010 Haiti earthquake, where inferior mortar played a major role in structural failure. Centuries-old unreinforced masonry buildings are among the most vulnerable throughout the world, and heavy tile roofs can fail catastrophically. Also susceptible to failure are structures with mortared brick or stone facades, the flexible wood and or steel frames constructed during the rapid expansion in the early 1900s weren't designed to hold these heavy facades during earthquake shaking, which is why we often see them peel away during an earthquake. For example, the Nisqually earthquake in Washington witnessed the collapse of brick walls in Seattle and Olympia. Brick chimneys also tend to be brittle and can collapse in earthquakes, even if the rest of a wood-framed house is undamaged. Older houses that aren't attached to their foundations sometimes slide off and are damaged or even collapse. And buildings that are tied to their foundations but lack sufficient side-to-side -side strength, particularly on the lowest floors, can shear sideways with strong or prolonged shaking. Homes can be made safer by ensuring that they are tied to their foundations and by installing plywood sheeting or diagonal bracing on the first floor and all upper floors where possible. Prime examples of weak or soft stories are the wood frame apartment buildings built above carports that collapsed during the 1989 Loma Prieta and 1994 Northridge earthquakes. These open carports lacked the bracing needed to resist the side-to-side -side forces, called shear forces, that occur during an earthquake. A number of techniques can be used to help reduce the damage to structures during an earthquake. When designing larger buildings, engineers must first calculate the earthquake forces that are likely to be exerted on a building during the lifetime of the building. To do that, they use building codes that are based on seismic hazard estimates developed by geoscientists, such as the National Seismic Hazard Map. Then, they consider the strategies appropriate for that expected level of shaking. For example, diagonal shear bracing is important for larger buildings, and while the bracing is usually hidden once the building is complete, it's sometimes on display on the outside of the building. For large buildings, there are additional techniques to reduce the potential damage to buildings and their contents. Base isolation essentially puts a building on horizontal shock absorbers, which reduces the side-to-side -side sway of a structure. 
This reduces the forces that the building and its contents experience during an earthquake. Base isolation allows the foundation to move, but protects everything above the foundation when the ground moves suddenly. Tuned mass dampers can counteract the amount of sway during prolonged ground shaking. Here, we see two buildings, one with a tuned mass damper. If the damper on the right is free to move, we see that the mass counteracts the force from the seismic waves by absorbing kinetic energy from the system. Dampers like this are engineered specifically to accommodate the height, weight, and stiffness of the structure. An unusual example is the iconic structure at the LAX airport, which has a 1,200-ton mass damper installed on the roof to counteract the expected building response during an earthquake. In closing, earthquake-resistant buildings save lives by using some of the design principles we've talked about, such as cross-bracing, shear walls, and shock absorbers. Still, if you feel the bump of an earthquake, it's important to know that the first waves may not be the strongest. Take immediate actions to drop, cover, and hold on before strong shaking arrives, which can save lives and reduce the risk of injury.